What loophole did you exploit before someone found out? My old apartment complex had a soda vending machine at the pool that was broken. If you put in 50 cents and press the button, nothing happened. If you put in another 50 cents and press the button, nothing happened. But if you put 50 cents in a third time and press the button, you'd get three sodas. I could see the vending machine from my couch. So I would watch for someone to try, and then try again, and then give up without trying a third time. And then I'd head over and get three sodas for 50 cents. There was a vending machine in my college dorm that if you have it a dime it would slip through to the coin return instantly but still count the credit for the dime. So as long as you had one dime, everything was free. Not me, but my roommate in college. Whenever you paid for anything on the university's website you'd earn college bucks. Each year's tuition paid for something small like a beer koozie, fold-up lawn chair, or if you somehow spent an absurd amount, an official school branded kayak. Well my buddy found out that the points were added to your account before payment went through on the website. So he just refreshed the page over and over and got millions of points. I only found out his scheme when I came home to an entire living room filled with boxes from our school. There were shirts, coolers, chairs, cups, and of course the kayak. We opened all of it, like idiots, and had a giant laugh at the school's expense. All of the guys living in that house were having a great time until we opened the smallest box which had $1,100 Visa gift cards. Then we got scared. A bunch of school branded crap from a warehouse was probably unusual, but not something that would bother the person loading all that up for delivery. The gift cards though? That was where he got caught. The gift card issuer called the school to verify such a large amount before activating the cards and that raised a lot of red flags in the accounting department. They traced it all back to my roommate and came and took everything back, they left the opened items and the worthless gift cards, and suspended him during his final semester of college. He had to write an apology letter and do community service for the school for that whole semester in return for not pressing charges for fraud. It makes for a great story though, and we had a ton of beer koozies and gift cards that we threw at each other like ninja stars. This is my favorite story of the thread, what an insane series of events to have gone through. To think if he had just limited himself to like a bit under one ten of what he did, he might have gotten away with $9k plus worth of swag and gift cards. A plus plus detail about the gift cards becoming ninja stars, that totally ties the whole thing together, D. For a while, you could buy $1 coins from the US Treasury using credit cards. They would ship them to you for free. If you had a rewards credit card, let's say an airline one, you could buy thousands of dollars of coins. Go to a bank, deposit them, and then pay your credit card back. It was a good way to get a ton of points for flying without ever paying for anything. They stopped doing this. A friend allegedly did something similar to this, but with a store that had points, a credit card that gave 5% back at specific stores. After a specific number of points, you could get a $100 gift card. This store also has a very liberal return policy. He would spend $10,000 a month at this store on the 5% cash back credit card, accumulate points, then return the merchandise all over the city county and claim he lost the receipt. They would give him cash, he'd pay the credit card bill off and still get the $500 in CC cash back, plus get a few hundred in gift cards to the store. It was a full-time damn job though. The jig was up once they changed their return policy, but went on for a solid 18 months. He was paying most of his bills, cell phone, electric, etc., with CC cash back rewards. Coca-Cola did a campaign where you register a code from the bottle cap and earn prizes. I worked at a store with bottle deposit and earned myself a sweet MP3 player with room for 5 songs or something. I was the only one I knew that had a MP3 player, so it was pretty sweet at the time. I learned before my USAF basic training to say that I played an instrument whenever they asked the group on the first day. I raised my hand and lied, the cymbals. So most days I got to angrily smash cymbals together in the air-conditioned band trailer, instead of marching drill practice in the San Antonio summertime sun. Similar story, only visual arts. I was an art school dropout before joining the Air Force. My recruiter had warned me of the dangers of raising your hand when they ask questions like who likes bowling? So I had avoided volunteering for anything until they asked if anyone had any artistic ability. I groaned and sheepishly raised my hand. Turns out my T wanted a new mural painted in the barracks. So while everyone else in my flight was cleaning the barracks, doing KP or other crappy tasks, I was happily painting away. I made sure to stretch it out so that I didn't finish it until everyone else was packing up after graduation. 
Buffalo Wild Wings used to have a check-in thing. Check in enough times and you get a free meal. The office I worked in was close enough, geographically, that I could check in from there without physically going to the restaurant. A bunch of co-workers and I had an alarm to check in every day and then once we all had the free meal, we'd go there for lunch. I got probably four or five free meals out of it before BWW revamped that system. When I was in college I was working at our student union and found a stack of coupons for a local barbecue chain. You could get an appetizer with the purchase of a soda so we would all go over there and we made friends with this one waitress who would ring in a sampler as an appetizer so we could get like four apps included when we bought our soda. She worked every Tuesday night so that was our night to head there. We went for months until one of the guys in our crew took her back to his dorm room and her fiancé found out. Had a college professor that insisted on doing all tests and quizzes online. If you looked at the page through view page source all of the answers for each multiple answer question had a marker on which one was correct. For a while, quizzes made in Canvas would do a weird thing if you had an ad blocker installed where the correct answer to a multiple choice question would be really big compared to the other options. I don't pretend to understand it, but I passed a few uni quizzes that I otherwise would not have with that one. When in high school there was a company that offered money to run an advertising window at the top of your screen. It would monitor mouse movement to track whether you were at your computer and pay a small amount per hour. A buddy and I downloaded it in a mouse moving software and would run both 24-7, except when we were on the computer. Made a few hundred dollars off of it before the company closed down. A new fast food place opened near my work. My mother-in-law got me a gift card to the place as a birthday gift. I went on opening day and tried to use my gift card, they said the system wasn't in place yet and just gave me my food for free. This worked for almost a month. It was the best gift card I ever had. Started with $20 on it and I got at least $100 worth of food. I used to work for Sears as a team. When someone came in without the rewards program, I would just put my own info in. That way my sales percentage for rewards members didn't drop, and I got all of their points. The amount of coupons and free money was insane, especially when I was working back in the tools department. I didn't stop until they started upgrading their ancient point of sale system. I also had an employee discount of 20% on soft lines, clothes, home, etc., and 10% on hard lines, tools, which they didn't take away for a few years after I quit. When I was at Sears, I apparently forgot to clock out for lunch one day. When I went to clock in from lunch, the time clock told me I missed a punch and just prompted me to type in what time I left. Running late, forget to punch in and fix it at lunchtime. Need a longer lunch without getting a write-up for taking one, forget to clock out for lunch and fix it when you get back. Nobody ever checked and I know of several who took advantage of it every day. Back when physical media video rentals were still a thing, we were gifted a Blockbuster gift card for a free rental. The card proved to be unbreakable. Every time we rented a movie I would hand the clerk the card. They would scan the barcode on the card, hand the card back, and the movie was free. We used the card for about three years until our local Blockbuster closed. There was obviously some sort of software error, but the gift card was never rejected. Found a website where you had to vote for Best Diving Liveaboard Company. It was shared by a company in the competition trying to boost the votes. The first prize was a dive trip in the Maldives for one week on their liveaboard. I found a flaw in the voting system and asked the company trying to win if they counted individual votes as entries or one person gets one vote. They replied that each vote counted as an entry. Politely told them to prepare me as the winner. The flaw in the website was that it used simple cookies to check if someone has already voted. Made a script to vote and clear cookies, rinse and repeat. I had a great trip scuba diving for a week in the Maldives. I had a similar thing for a newspaper contest to win a trip on one of those space tourism flights. They didn't even track cookies, you just had to refresh the page. I was in the top spot for a long time, but you only had to be in the top 10, and they would hand select someone based off their story. I didn't win, but I made it to the top 10. Bubbles from the trailer park boys got the top spot, but didn't win either because he was a celebrity and they wanted an average person to win. When I was in middle school, Pepsi did a thing where if you bought a 20 ounces soda, there was a decent chance the cap would say you were a winner on the inside, and you could exchange it for another 20 ounces. Problem is, a dark colored soda like Pepsi is reflective. Hold the bottle slightly tilted and you could look at the reflection of the inside of the cap. For a whole school year I didn't pay for soda. Bought a winner, 
and every day I'd exchange the cap at a gas station I passed on the way home for another winner. Eventually Pepsi caught on and instead of it saying you won on the cap itself, there would be a code you had to enter online. We didn't have the internet in our pocket in those days, and it wouldn't have been worth it to read and enter multiple backwards codes for a soda if we had, so this ended the scheme. Sprite did this when I was young. My friends and I got banned from our local grocery store because we would go through every bottle looking for winners. No one ever found out, but they didn't know how to set up Unix when I was in college. You could drop to the parent directory in programming classes, and go into the other classmates' folders see how they were coding their projects. Just in case you couldn't figure out a section of your code. In my and my programming class way back in 1999, all assignments were each due by a certain day. You had to save each assignment onto a floppy disk and then hand the disk in monthly. The teacher could see when the assignment was complete by checking the date on the file. I figured out the date was obviously just the last time the file was saved and coincided with the date the computer was set to. Being the procrastinating college student, any time I did one of the assignments I just adjusted the computer date to the due date before I saved it. This teacher always let me skip class 2 because I was on the soccer team so in hindsight I probably didn't even need to do that ha ha. Back in the late 90s with the dot com boom there was a website called Prize Point. You would play one of their many games, when the game was over you would hit a cash out button and win tickets that was based on your score. My computer was running slow with dial up internet and I was frustrated and hit the cash out button a whole bunch of times. The next thing that popped up was I reached my daily limit of point, something I had never done before. I started doing this every day and reached the daily limit with just one game. The tickets were used like raffle entries for one of their prizes, one ticket equals one entry. I saved all of mine for months and dumped them into a trip to Hawaii. It was one of my best vacations ever. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed reading the inventive ways Reddit users exploited loopholes before getting caught. Remember, we love hearing from you. Leave a comment below to let us know which loophole you found most fascinating, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to never miss out on our latest content. See you next time.